Most churches will play anywhere between four to six songs every week. So every single year, on the low end, they'll probably be playing at least 25 songs to upwards of 100 or even more for some churches. This can present a challenge for some musicians, especially those coming from a classically trained background, because churches simply don't use sheet music anymore. However, if we were to rewind the clock only a few decades, you'd see that nearly every church was using sheet music for the band and the congregation. They're using a hymnal. So why don't we use sheet music anymore? Well, depending on the person or the church you ask, there are probably several answers to that question. But if we simply look at how modern worship music is now structured and performed live, we can see that most songs use a repetitive chord progression, usually consisting of only four chords, with some variation in the progression for different sections of the song, like a verse or a chorus. Plus, it's really common for churches to rearrange a song, extend or repeat a chorus, improvise new melodies, all during worship. These are all things that would make it really difficult for someone trying to follow along on sheet music. So instead, now we use chord charts. Now, whether you've played from a chord chart before for or not, I've got you covered. While there is a big difference between what's written in sheet music and what's written on a chord chart, at the end of the day, we're just playing songs. If you are using sheet music for worship songs with full piano parts, lyrics, melody, left-hand accompaniment, you might consider moving away from that to a chord chart. The sheet music has full piano arrangement, and you don't need to play everything since you now have a full band and vocalist who don't need you to play their notes. Vocalists might not sing every note in the rhythm notated on your sheet music, and so that gets kind of clunky. There's also so many page turns and repeats, uh, one song is often five to eight pages long or more, and they're really hard to navigate all the repeats and all the page turns. Instead, now on a chord chart, all the chords are on one page. Sheet music can be really helpful, especially when getting started so you have an idea about how to play left-hand accompaniment and chord shapes. So it's great as a tool and a resource. But I would encourage you to start looking at your hands instead of looking at the page. Start getting familiar with the chord shapes that are on the keyboard. As you use chord charts, you'll also start to become more aware of the common progressions you'll see in worship songs. When I was first starting out, I even would draw out notes on my chord chart as well so I would know what I wanted to play. It's great if you can work towards being able to play basic chords in all keys because so often you'll be asked to do a last minute key change. There are a few other types of chords that we also see in chord charts. The first one is gonna be slash chords. So a slash chord is when you see a chord name and then you see a slash and then you see another chord name. And so the way that you read these is the first chord is always the main chord. And for the slash, you can think to yourself over top of and then the second chord. So if it's C slash E, you think C chord over top of E. And you would play it like that. Another type of chord you might see is a sus chord. And sus stands for suspended. So this is like unsettled, unfinished, suspenseful. It feels like it's going somewhere. So you might see C sus two or C sus four. And sometimes with C sus four, it's also just called C sus. So for C sus two, you're gonna swap your third tone in your chord for your two. So if I just built a regular chord with one, three, and five, it looked like this. Now if I'm doing C sus two, I'm gonna play my second tone instead of the third. And it sounds like it wants to re resolve back up. So for C sus or C sus four, you're just gonna swap your third tone for the fourth. And this one just lifts up the ear a little bit more. So you will see this one more commonly. Then a few other chords that you'll see are seventh chords. Now these make your playing really rich and amazing. So they are fun to add in. What you wanna do with these seventh chords to make it super simple is instead of playing with one, three, five, you're actually gonna switch your fingers up and you're gonna play it with two, three, five. And you're gonna add the seventh below your root note. So if it's a major seven, you're just gonna add one half step below it. We could do this for another chord, like F major seven. So you could build the chord, instead of putting your one on the F, you can put your two and add in half a step below it. You can also do a minor seven chord. So this is similar if I wanted to do D minor seven, same thing, I'm gonna play two, three, and five instead. And this time I'm going to add two half steps below for minor instead of one for major. So here I have D and two half steps is gonna bring me to C.
And you can apply this formula to any of them. The last one you might see is the dominant seven chord. So in your key, you have typically a, the one note is always gonna be the note name of the scale that you're talking about. And the fifth one is sometimes called dominant. And if you create a seventh chord out of that one, then you're also going to have your bottom note with two half steps below. So same thing, you'll build it with your second finger on the note name. And then you're gonna add the note that's two half steps below it. Now, it's great to practice these chords with the notes in different orders to get really comfortable. This is called inversions. So we call it the root position when they're stacked, like we've been doing this, like C, E, G. This is root position. They call it first inversion when you move the C up to the top. You've got the middle tone on the bottom. And then they call it second inversion when you move that note on top, the E. So now you've got G, C, E. And that's not super important to keep track of, but what is important is that you can play these chords in different orders, and when you adjust the order that the notes are in, you can have really smooth transitions between your chords. So for example, I could move around with all root position chords. I could change up the order of the notes so that they are closer together on the keyboard and they flow a little more smoothly. As you're first practicing it, one thing that you can do is change one of your chords to an inversion and keep the others in root position. So you're just changing one at a time. So perhaps I might decide that on my F chord, I'm gonna play an inversion, and then on all the other chords, I'm gonna do root chords. You can also play around with adding in sus chords. And the easiest way to do sus chords is always to bring your hand to root position for the sus chord and try it out that way. Now you can do it in any of the inversions, it's just a little bit trickier. So a great way to do this is if you know you wanna play the sus chord, move your hand to root position, and then move back to other inversions as you continue working your way through the chord progression. Now, when you're first getting started reading chord charts, like I said before, feel free to simplify. You don't have to play the seventh chord or the sus chord that you see on the chart, but know that you can, and you now have the tools to build the chord that you see on the chart, and so you can work on doing that. You'll really wanna listen to the song, the pulse, and the rhythm, and look at all the chords for the whole song and make sure you know what they are. If you see any chords that are unfamiliar, it's really good to figure them out, write them down, practice them a little bit before you start trying to go through the song. When you're starting, the left hand can play root notes and the right hand can play simple chords. And you can get comfortable with playing along with the chart on whole notes and moving between the chords and then add on to fill more space. So now we're gonna walk through All Hail King Jesus. It has some sus chords and slash chords in there. It also has all the major and minor chords in the key as well. Now, if I just played root position chords, this is how this would sound. So what I like to do is actually change my inversions so that the chords are underneath the vocal line and usually my top note is going to be the top note of the melody and the other notes are gonna be playing below it. So here's how I might adjust and change up a little bit of what I'm playing. So instead of playing these root chords, I'm gonna change the way the inversions are. Something 
something else that's really great to look for in your chord chart is if there is a potential tag where lyrics are repeated multiple times. Sometimes you'll see it in the chord chart. Other times a worship leader will just want to tag and do a bit of a repeat at the end of a chorus where they will sing the last phrase a number of times. You might see in the chord chart where the chorus will end on your one chord or for example, if you're in the key of G, you might end on the G. So this is what it might sound like if you were ending a song like Goodness of God, you're ending the chorus and you're ending it on the one. But perhaps instead, they wanted to sing that last line a few times. And so instead of going to the one, you're going to go to the sixth chord, which is going to be E minor. So since we aren't using sheet music anymore and we're using chord charts, it can be tricky to learn lead lines by ear and play them while you're playing chords at the same time. But you can train your ear to listen to a melody line and play it back. This is just something that you have to practice doing and over time it will get easier. It helps to start to become aware of what number the melody line starts with, which note in the scale. And it helps if you can notice what certain notes in the scale sound and feel like to you. Sometimes the melody note is actually a note in the chord you're playing and I like to try those notes first if I'm not sure. Singing the line out loud that you want to play also helps your brain connect to your fingers more quickly. You might even practice by playing a chord progression and see what melody notes you hear in your head and trying to play them back. The more you do it, the more you'll be able to accurately connect a note you hear to a note that you're playing on the keyboard. Just like anything, playing from chord charts and playing by ear and improvising, these are all just a learned skill. So keep practicing and keep having fun.